Hello there, friends and neighbors. Thanks for coming back to my channel. This is me, Stella Hendricks, and we are going to be on chapter, I think, six. Yes, of The Showgirl Next Door by Holly Madison. <clears throat> what I want. Um, I wanted to read this whole chapter because this is the stuff that I am obsessed with in my life. And so I made myself pick only one chapter per like page and if um there were like two paragraphs together then I had to skip one anyway I made myself be only selective because I really would read this whole chapter and I don't think I can do that so this is Vegas Vixens the evolution of the showgirl the showgirl is without a doubt one of the most recognizable symbols of Las Vegas her ubiqui ubiquitousness stems from the Vegas tendency for every resort to try to outdo one another. One gets a good thing going and countless imitators pop up immediately, trying to one-up their competitors in search of the tourist dollars. <laughs> Very true. Okay, look at her headdress. Is that not so amazing? I actually don't know who this one is. Later on, you'll see Vegas Vicky again. For her, I don't know who she is. The popularity of the Foilies Berger inspired the Ziegfeld Follies, extravagant Broadway spectacles staged by impresario Florence Ziegfeld from 1907 through 1931. Though the Follies featured a variety of entertainers, they are most res remembered for their beautiful women, Ziegfeld's famous Follies girls. On a mission to glorify the American girl, Ziegfeld had his women draped in the most elaborate showy costumes, sometimes in varying states of nudity. He was able to get away with this on Broadway in the early 20th century by having semi-nude women motionless on stage posed in tableau as if depicting works of art. By the mid 20th century, the vaudeville and burlesque circuit offering a variety of live entertainment was falling out of favor in America because of the rising popularity of television. At the same time, luxury resorts were popping up along what would become the Las Vegas Strip, and they were hungry to book top-notch entertainment to attract customers. Every place on the strip had showgirls, often dressed in cutesy costumes reflecting the resort's theme. Pink for the flamingos dancers and western saloons wear for the last frontier, for example. The women danced on stage in between the acts booked in the showroom. Cool. Oh. Adding their own brand of glamour to the Las Vegas strip, where sexy headliners such as Lily St. Cyr, Jane Mansfield, and Anne Margaret. St. Cyr was born Willis Marie Von Schock in Minneapolis. Growing into a stunning statuesque blonde, Lily, along with her sister, found work as a chorus dancer at the Florentine Gardens in Hollywood. This gig would set her on the path to becoming the queen of striptease burlesque in the 1950s. Ambition, creativity, and attention to detail and quality made Lily an excellent showwoman who became a sensation, performing solo striptease numbers in the hottest nightclubs in Hollywood and around the world. This is her hair. Amazing. Okay, I'll give you a look at this. It's so beautiful. One of the movie's most Vegasy vixens, Anne Margaret, would have a lucrative career performing consistently on the Vegas Strip for more than 40 years. As the female lead in Elvis Presley's Viva Las Vegas, she perfectly embodied the beautiful, sexy singer-dancer ideal for this strip. Anne Margaret's debut in Las Vegas was as an unknown 19-year-old in 1960 as part of George Burns' Christmas show at the Sahara. 
her talent and charm, as showcased in Burns' show, landed her no less than a booking on The Jack Benny Show, a role in the movie State Fair, and a recording contract with RCA. Wows her. After becoming a major Hollywood star and sex symbol, she returned to Vegas in 1967 to perform in her own show at the Riviera. Oh my gosh, she's like the new Anne Margaret. Oh, that's so awesome. What a dream. Oh, look at these. The stardust. Those must be ungodly heavy, but that would be so much fun. <laughs> Okay. The Lido's showgirls were topless and the fact that the show and the dancers themselves came directly from France and were supported by top caliber production values made the nudity appear artistic, continental, and acceptable in the eyes of the 1950s American tourist. Without this element of sophistication and beauty, the topless trend on the Las Vegas Strip may not have survived conservative scrutiny. Foley's has holds the records as the longest running show on the strip. In fact, the grandmother of my roommate, Laura, saw the show the year it opened and it made such an impression on her that she traveled to Vegas in 2009 specifically to see the show again on hearing of its impending close. Foley's was a French music hall themed variety show featuring traditional Parisian showgirls and spectacular can-can closing number. Dang, I wish I would have seen that one. Wow, look at this, look at these dresses. Ah! That is some animal. Okay. Uh, Jubilee, the lavish stage production still plays at the same location, which is now Bally's. For the visitor who wants to take a trip back in time and see an old school Vegas spectacular, Jubilee is just as it was when it opened in 1980 with showgirls, dancers, showboys, elaborate costumes, and unbelievable sets. Jubilee is the last remaining classic Vegas showgirl show. I think it is actually closed now though, to tell you the truth. Sadness indeed. Oh my God, is this Elizabeth Berkley in Showgirls? If you have not seen that movie, Showgirls. Okay, I was gonna say you need to watch it, but I forgot there's actually a controversy about that movie. So I think what they should do is they should edit that part just completely out. Just take that the F out and then the rest of the movie can be a cult classic. That is what I would do. But that movie is the most hilarious movie in the universe to watch. And it's the camp, campiest. It is the campiest movie. And I'm pretty sure it did not intend to be that campy. So it's great. You should watch the Showgirls movie. Okay. Okay, I love Showgirls, but pink and orange do not go together. That looks terrible. I hate it. Even though I love Miss Congeniality and I love Miss Congeniality too. But not as much, but I hate the orange and pink. Bad combination, friends. But besides that, I really like the way that the feathers hang and everything. It looks great. Okay, the neo-burlesque trend swept through Vegas in the early 2000s. In an effort to keep, in an effort by the casino resorts to keep customers on property and not lured away to strip clubs, various properties experimented with having burlesque striptease on sh striptease shows on their properties. Because law prohibits strip clubs and gaming establishments, the burlesque entertainment was never nude, but down to pasties and g-string at 40 Deuce at Mandalay Bay. The old school duplicate of the LA hotspot had competition from Tangerine, a nightclub at Treasure Island that featured burlesque dancers in the club. Pussycat Dolls Lounge was adjacent to Pure Nightclub at Caesars Palace. The next paragraph she says is the trend in the last through 2010. And I don't know exactly what she means by that because there are still tons of burlesque jokes in Las Vegas, 
both the kind of vaudeville type that I generally do and like the uh, the more choreographed type that you see in like ex burlesque and stuff it's super popular so maybe it like had a real downswing when she was there or something and then it came up again <gasps> what that was the end of the chapter i cannot believe this this is another short video how did this happen i thought it'd be longer well i thought i was gonna read the whole thing but no i can't read the whole thing that's you can't do that next time we're gonna read chapter seven i'm extremely excited because it's about glitter gulch which I'm pretty much is like downtown Fremont Street. Yeah, downtown Las Vegas. I love it so much. So I'm sure we'll have lots of fun things to talk about on that one. So thank you so much for joining me, friends and neighbors, and I'll catch you on the flip side.